In today's video, we will be taking two vintage Bell & Howe projector lenses and turning them into binoculars. I mean, no, no, uh, into photo lenses. Come along, this one's gonna be cool. So adapting these Bell & Howe projector lenses to be used as photo lenses, we're gonna to have to overcome a few different challenges. First, the lenses do not have any kind of lens mount. They're designed to mount into a projector, and so they're not going to be able to be mounted onto a camera traditionally. We're gonna to have to have a way to modify that. Second, there is no focus mechanism. The focus mechanism was typically built into the projector as some turning knobs that change the distance of the lens to the projector screen and the film. So we're gonna to have to figure out how to create a focus mechanism, probably some kind of helicoid. And third, there's gonna be no aperture control. These are gonna be shooting wide open, which is going to present a lot of challenges on shooting on bright sunny days and things of that nature. We're probably going to maybe utilize some filters or something of that effect. All right, but the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify the flange focal distance for these lenses. What that means, the flange focal distance is how close the lens has to sit to the image plane in order to achieve infinity focus. If you don't get it close enough to achieve infinity focus, you'll still be able to focus, but you'll essentially have a macro lens or a lens that's never going to be able to shoot those vast landscapes or things at a very far distance. It's only going to be utilized on close-up subjects, right? So the first thing we need to do is determine the flange focal distance. Simplest way of doing this is floating the lens in front of the open camera, turned on, and kind of pushing and pulling it back and forth to see exactly where we achieve infinity focus. This is extremely important to note because by determining the flange focal distance, it will tell us what um, cameras these lenses are even going to be compatible with. So from messing around with this, it looks as though the flange focal distance of these lenses is roughly about 16 millimeters. Uh, which is even closer than our RF mount on our EOS R. So we're gonna have to figure that out. The one advantage that we have is the EOS R, the shutter actually closes and opens right in front of the sensor plane. So there is actually a little bit of a gap in the body. So we can actually probably have the element protrude into the body a little bit, as long as it doesn't clip the shutter. If anybody wants to attempt this or do this on their own, you're doing it at your own risk. Like I said, if this goes too far back, it will damage the shutter blades and essentially make the camera useless or a very expensive repair. So doing a lot of research into how we're going to adapt these projector lenses, watching YouTube videos, reading articles online, the common consensus is to do a, an M58 helicoid with a M58 to RF mount adapter and then the way to put the lens or the projector lens into the helicoid is either with a 3D printed collar or the simpler and cheaper version is a uh, bike inner tube tire cut down to size and then stretched around the lens to create friction and tension. I don't have access to a 3D printer, so we're going to go ahead and get some bike tire. So three simple components and then we should be able to make these into functioning lenses. Now I made, oops, and I got Canon EF adapters instead of RF adapters. But I think, I think we can do something about that. Time to file. All right, now that we've filed down, I guess what I'm gonna call it is one of the wings of the EF mount 
adapter. Uh, it still is able to lock into RF, but by shaving that little bit off and filing it down, it now mounts to RF and EF, kind of cool. Uh, we can now actually assemble the lenses by putting them together with the helicoid and using the bike tire and attaching it to the mount. So let's go. And with that, our projector lenses are ready to shoot with. That was an incredibly tedious process, um, made more difficult by me forgetting to boil the inner tube. But anyway, let's see what these lenses can do. So looking at these lenses, both lenses share a fair amount of characteristics, but they have some differences depending on which one you're looking at. Both are very sharp in the center with dramatic fall off towards the sides, and both create rather swirly bokeh. Because of the helicoids I chose, the focus throw is very broad, allowing macro focus as well as infinity and with a lot of precision and control. Color rendition is fantastic out of both lenses. As projection lenses, I would expect that their color rendition would be exemplary, but it does exceed expectation. The swirly bokeh does really pull attention to the center focus of the lens, and the sharpness definitely helps with that because as I said it falls off very quickly on the sides when you notice on these images the center subject is sharp but the shoulders fall off when you put the subject to the side in like a rule of thirds kind of situation the sharpness just does not hold up pictures are nice but sharpness isn't there Flaring is very unique with these lenses. The coatings necessary for projection are very different from the coatings necessary for photography. As such, it creates a very unique characteristic of this spherical ring-shaped kind of flare that is very dramatic and very unique looking. I definitely kind of dig the look. 
the lens itself creates a significant amount of barrel distortion, all the more noticeable when you switch to full frame versus crop sensor. Now this is very easily corrected in post, and you can crop in for the adjustment to make a very usable result. Just be aware, the lens, both lenses, have severe barrel distortion and therefore they need to be corrected. Now at night, we get all the more of an example of how sharp it is in the center and how much it falls off on the side. This is very apparent in the out of focus areas, in the bokeh. And on the sides, it looks triangular, where in the center, it is circular. The 16 millimeter in particular completely falls apart at night as it is unable to control any flaring. The flaring is very overpowering and makes the images look muddy. The 51 millimeter does a fantastic job of controlling and mitigating the flaring, but still has that weird accentuated triangular bokeh on the edges with a normal bokeh in the center. Both lenses are extremely sharp and perform well in low light as they both have a wide maximum aperture. All right, well, that brings us to the end of our video today. I want to say thank you so much for all of you who got to this point and watched through the video. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit me with a comment. Let me know what you want to see in future videos. Really appreciate all of you who stuck through. Really appreciate the views. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next video. Peace out. Bye-bye.